confused about the status of the renegotiations in the North American Free Trade Agreement? Join the club. On Friday, August 31st, there was formal notice to Congress that the administration intended to enter into and sign a deal that had reached with Mexico and that it was going to sign with Canada if Canada was willing. Since then, a lot of the press has focused on, will Canada agree? Will there be a deal? What will happen? But actually more important than what countries are in NAFTA is what the rules of NAFTA include. So the U.S.-Mexico deal gave us a little insight into what is and isn't going in the right direction. The good news is that the investor state dispute settlement system, those outrageous tribunals where multinational corporations can go in front of three corporate attorneys and demand unlimited compensation for any domestic environmental law, health regulation, court decision that they think violates their expansive corporate rights and privileges, they can get paid by us taxpayers, that system is raised. And already $392 million has been paid out by taxpayers to corporations under tax and water policy, timber policy, energy policy. So stopping more of that damage would be really important. The second good thing is that the agreement got rid of a thing called the proportional sharing agreement. That was a right for multinational companies to have a certain percentage of the other country's natural resources, even if the country decided to conserve or ban a dangerous process for environmental purposes. A third good thing is the standards of how much content from North America have to be in a product to get NAFTA benefits went up, up from 62% to 75%, and a share of that has to be made by workers making $16 an hour or more. That would be a big deal. The problem is, while labor standards in the agreement are improved, and really improved, so far there simply isn't sufficient enforcement of those improved standards. And that's a very big deal because in the 25 years of NAFTA, workers in Mexico, their wages have gone down, down from where they were in real terms before NAFTA, but now down to the level of workers in China. Before NAFTA, U.S. auto workers were making five times what their counterparts were in Mexico. Now it's nine and a half times. The result of this race to the bottom has been more than a million U.S. jobs outsourced in the 25 years of NAFTA, with more jobs getting outsourced to Mexico every week. Those jobs have brought down wages in the US, and of course, at a buck 50 to $2 an hour, they're not a living wage in Mexico either. Unless it gets rid of the outsourcing incentives and adds labor and environmental standards with swift and certain enforcement, US companies are going to continue to outsource jobs to Mexico, pay workers a pittance, dump toxics on the ground and sell those products back here. The test for any final agreement is whether or not it stops the ongoing damage. We will know more as of October 1st. That is the real drop dead deadline because that's when an agreement has to be published in order for it to be signed under the timeline that was started on Friday, August 31st. So we will know by then if we have the deal that actually would stop NAFTA's damage that could make it worse or that's a wash. We'll be back in touch. Stay tuned.